presented by Tap Room. 74 Wyndham Street, the ultimate sporting hub. www.drinkfromthetap.co.nz F-F-N-S-F-N. You crazy for this one, Rick? The Tap Room presents Sprawl and Brawl, the ultimate combat podcast. Podcast, podcast with Dan, JB, and Eddie Redscarf. <laughs> Welcome to Sport and Brawl, your Sunday afternoon MMA it's Combat Sports Podcast. You with Dan, what up? You with JB, the Ultimate Rider. Yo. And you, of course, Etty Red Scaff. What's up, what's up? What's up, Etty? Hey, 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 hey. Big day today, UFC Huge. Stockholm happening right now. The preliminary main card will kick off in about an hour's time. We're going to lead up to that and talk a little bit about that very, very shortly. Yeah. Of course, it is going to be a huge one. Gustafsson versus Rumble Johnson. Mm. We, got a, we got a winner. We do we have a winner. Yeah, well, you know, I, I everyone is looking at Gustafson to take this one. Um, yep. He does have the tools. He, he's, he's essentially the better fighter. On, on, you know, on paper, the best fighter on the <clears throat> planet, and took him twenty five minutes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But you know, I think Johnson has what they call that punches chance. He lays yep. one good hit, and he can he can finish he can finish a fight. He, he's been finishing a lot of fights. Uh, recently, and he has stoppage power. He's a hell of a wrestler as well. Can yeah, any yeah. of these guys take the greatest fighter in the division? Yeah, well, I Gus that, definitely could. Gus, well, I, I think that's a pretty big call. I, I think that what what the fighters are lacking here now, when when you're watching people fight Jones, and the thing that I see that, the, that some of these fighters are lacking is a lot of head movement. Um, DC, for example, he went very flat footed into fighting John Jones, yeah, and he got taken apart. He ended up fighting the fight. That John Jones kind of wanted to fight, and you know John Jones took it to him. He, that's John Jones all over, eh? That's that's how he rolls. Yeah, absolutely. You know, DC did say that he wanted to put the pressure on, but then you know, very similar to what Kane does. Only problem is Kane does a lot of head movement, and that is there's very yeah. so important head movement, feet movement, putting yourself in the right position to land the right punches. DC went in very flat footed. If Johnson can do the same and have that same sort of movement, because at the moment for the last few fights he fights very flat footed. If he changes his sort of style of movement, he can be very dangerous for, for Gus. So Rumble's got some knockout power behind him. Yeah. Mm. Does Rumble have any chance though? And any other facet today against Gustafsson? His wrestling is huge. His wrestling is is definitely definitely going to be a factor if he wants it to. It's just you know, is he going to go for the knockout? He you know, technically I because think he, Gus takes he, it because te- generally he was in sort of his earlier days once he came to the UFC, he was much more of a mat orientated fighter. But then in the last sort of four or five fights, he's become a little bit more about knockout yep. power. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he was fighting in the welterweight, and that's like three weight classes, and that's like a sixty pound cut for him. Yeah, which, yeah. You know, that's twenty kgs every time you want to fight. And, and 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 now he's fighting at a natural, his natural body weight. More natural, more, sure. yeah, much, much more natural. <laughs> he looks good. He, he looks, looks really good. If he, you saw the weigh-ins, he looks phenomenal, phenomenal. Mm, so uh, it's going to be re- a really interesting matchup. Um, if it does go the five rounds, I'm, I, you know, I could lean towards Gus. But if it's, it's an early stoppage, I'm, yeah. I'm Do you think to- Rumble can go twenty-five minutes? Well, you know, th- that's the thing, you know. It, it's it's almost similar to the Deontay Wilder fight, which was the heavyweight fight last week, um, yeah. last week Sunday. A lot of people, because he had never gone past five rounds, he had knocked out yeah. literally thirty two guys in thirty uh, within five rounds. And people yeah. were saying, if it goes past five rounds, he's not going to last. That's right. He lasted twelve rounds, and he gave the champ a hiding pretty much every round. Yeah. Boxing as well. Bo- yeah, and it was, it was that was a boxing match. So I, I don't think cardio is going to be a problem. Um, you know, especially when you're at that, uh, when you're that elite of a fighter, yeah. You know, this is not like part-time training. These guys are day in, day out in the gym. They love it. They yeah. So so they will be pushing them. He will be doing some gangster yeah. rounds leading into this. And, you know, and yeah. he's what's his camp again? Uh, black the Black Zillions? Yeah, yeah, with Rashad. Mm. Because the original main event was supposed to be Sugar, Sugar Rashad Evans versus Gustafsson. That's right. And then yeah. Rashad said he wasn't going to be ready in time for the event. Yeah. Um, which is sort of a, which is actually a signal of sort of where Rashad is in his career in regards to his body and stuff anyway. Yeah, so. yeah. He's definitely wearing. Yeah, and, and I, I think um, Rashad's making more money doing, because he's an analyst as well in uh, UFC. Yep. Uh, and he's he's the leader of the pack of the, the Black Zillion. So I, I think he's at a position where, you know, he, he's he's been the champion. What, what, what more 
can you do now when you're at his point? You to know, be the champion again. That's it. That's, yeah. that's the motivation. Like, you know, once you get to this point, it, it's, um, you know, it's a famous quote in basketball, stops being about money and starts being about rings. I think it's the same yeah. in most sports. And this, is, yeah. not, this yeah. is not professional wrestling where it's predetermined. These guys mm. are competing to be the best in their division, the best in the world. And anything could happen. The best pound-for-pound pound fighter across all divisions. You know, they, yeah. that's what they want to be. John Jones, that's him right now. For a long time, was Anderson Silva. Maybe. Oh. Yep. Maybe GSP for yeah, yeah. periods of time, arguably, in the, in, in, yeah, arguably man. enjoying parts of their careers and stuff. Do you think that Evans would have been a better, better, a better matchup for uh, Gustafsson? Well, Rashad has huge wrestling as well. You know, he fought on the Ultimate Fighter. I think it was season two, the heavyweights, and um, mm. he got to the finals and won the heavyweight finals. Then he dropped down to light heavyweight. So he can definitely fight against guys bigger than him. Gustafsson's six five six six. Um, with excellent takedown defense himself. Uh, he also, you know, first person to take John Jones down. So, I don't know. It, I think with Rashad, the question at the moment is chin, because, um, you know, once you start getting hit on the button, it starts to get easier for you to get hit on the button. Yeah. He's getting older. You know, he's done a lot of training himself. So, you know, who knows what sort of condition his mind is actually in. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, if you're, you're, making, you're making a lot of money, at this point of his career, he's making a lot of money without actually entering the ring. There's no point, there's no need for him to, to endanger himself. You know, Goes like back to um, what Rogan touched on. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Rogan's touched on a lot though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know the whole. Um, hey, I don't want to fight him. I've seen him. I've seen him kick a bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you, um, if you had with him, better though. options than fighting for a living, would you take them? I guess that's that's the yeah, sort of yeah. what you're touching on here. Mm. All right, so UFC on Fox today. Gustafsson versus Johnson coming out of Stockholm, Sweden. Um, the main card kicking off at two, uh, at 2 o'clock. It's going to be a fantastic... Um, uh, uh, it's actually a really... It's an interesting-looking card. Dan Henderson versus M- Masasi. What, yeah. what are we picking there? Um, well, Dan Henderson's old, man. He's like 40-plus. Olymp- former Olympic wrestler. He's, he's yeah. like... No, he's, he's 40, 45, I think, 44. Yeah, so, mm. you know, he's, he's definitely got... Well, has had the experience in the past and the credentials, but you know whether he still has what it takes to to get in there with someone like Gegard Mousasi, who is world class. That's um, that's something I'm not convinced of right now. Mousasi mm. can mix it up standing on the ground. His grappling and takedown defense is huge. So I would I would pick Musasi. And the last time we saw Dan Henderson was in uh, was in May of last year when yep. he when he when he was when he was choked out by DC of course and yeah. he, he yeah. didn't he didn't look Spent very good he didn't look good oh, at all at UFC one seven three. around that yeah. cage. But that, I mean DC is a phenomenal re- for not, oh my god phenomenal phenomenal I am fobbing out today. <laughs> um, you know DC is an amazing fighter like he his wrestling is just crazy he's he's fucking gangster on uh, Dan Henderson the way he won a medal down. in the Olympics though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like the 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 wrestling in the Olympics is so different. Was he a silver medalist? Though? I think it was silver. Hang on, let's have a look. Yeah, yeah. But you know, the wrestling that they do there is, it. I want to say it's very different to the MMA type wrestling. Yeah, it's all body locks. Um, mm. I, I believe no single negative. No, no, yeah, no, I mean, no, like, no Olympic medal. Like, like, look at GSP. He he was not. He's not a wrestler by design, and he is. Amazing. Yeah. He's been taking, and he took down so many wrestlers. Matt Hughes schooled yeah. them in the area that he wasn't even good at. But what he, what he's good at is the MMA type of wrestling, which yeah. is which is very different. But still, you know, I, I mean, I'm not saying anything against Dan Henderson, but DC is just a, he's a bad motherfucker. Also, the age difference, the lack of TRT, you know, Hendo, yeah. etc. So, I. I don't hold a lot of hope for him though. Yeah, Masasi's a young man now. I mean, he's yeah. what? Tw- yeah. He's 29 years old. He's Strike force champion. Stri- yeah. Yeah. And, and saying that they're both of them coming off losses. I mean, um, yep. um, he, he lost to uh, Ronaldo Souza last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was a fight. That was yeah, a fight. yeah. It was, uh, yeah. But yet again, another, another, another situation where one of these two fighters were um, choked out. I think, yeah. I, th- I think he was a guillotine choke where Dan Henderson was a rear naked choke. Yeah. That's right. Mm. So, but in there, you have a look at that because um, uh, Gigard Mas- Masasi had come off, I think, on his last five fights had lost two, one, three. The complete yeah. opposite with Dan Henderson. His last, his last five fights, he's lost um, four and one, 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 one. Yeah, but, right. uh, but, but listen, yeah. but listen, but, but look at the list of, of, of fighters that Dan Henderson in the last two years at his age has fought: Leota Machida, Rashad Evans, Vitor Belfort. Shogun and DC. It's, it's a pretty impressive like, like, title challenges. That, that, yeah, yeah. And that's what I mean. And he's going like round like, like here. Like here we are. He went three rounds with DC. Yeah. He went three rounds with Shogun. Um, 
He got he, he got KO'd in the first round by Vitor. Yeah. Um, three rounds with Rashad and three rounds with, with Lyoto Mashida. And then he went five rounds previous to that in 2011 with yeah. Shogun, you know? Yeah, yeah. So One he's of the got, greatest he's, matches ever. He's ever. Got, he, that's right. And he's got, so he's got staying power. Is he going to have enough against Musasi in the regards to hanging in there? Um, what, you know, Dan Henderson has that punching power that can just end everything. H-bomb. You know, yeah, the H-bomb, you know, and that's what he's famous for. Uh, like, on paper, Musasi should just kick his ass. Yeah. Should he should have an easy he should have an easy fight, but you know all it takes is just that fraction of a second for Dan to let it off, clip him, and then it's game over. He's like a bear as well, you know. Dan mm. Henderson, he is he is definitely weathered, and you know I I wouldn't put anything past him, and anything can happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so also on the card as we just look through the card of what's happening in the main section of today's UFC Stockholm uh, for, uh, fight night on Fox, Phil Davis, Ryan Bader. Talk us through it, JB. Um, huge wrestling on both sides here. Uh, Phil Davis is a uh, NCAA champion, you know, American All Wrestling champion. Yep. Uh, Ryan Bader is a multiple-time All-American himself, so, you know, he's got to that top level, just hasn't achieved the, the top status. Um, Phil Davis has, he's come a long way, you know, he's been Machida previously and, uh, you know, not a great fight. Yeah. But he, he has been to the top and he has hung with those guys. And... Um, I'd say he's more multifaceted than Ryan Bader. So Phil Davis lost to Rumble Johnson last year in yep, April, yep, yep. Um, and then but then came and defeated Glover Teixeira, who was on a tear up until then. For sure. Mm. Yeah. Um, Ryan Bader, I, I, I mean, I've, I've not seen a lot of Ryan Bader before, prior to him uh, main eventing the f- uh, the fight night on Fox yep. in August. So against uh, St. Pru. Yeah, uh, St. Pru. Yeah, yeah. St. Pru. So I mean, who are you picking in this one? For the the Davis and um, Beta. and Beta, Beta. Um, if it ends up being a stand up, I'm going towards Beta. Okay. One thing Davis needs to really work on is his stand up. When uh, Johnson took away his wrestling, yeah, you you really got to see to rely on. yeah, you really got to, got to see how shit a stand up is, you know. And um, <laughs> you know, I mean, he he really needs to work on. If he's worked on the stand up, then you know, this could be a good fight. But I reckon Beta's going to get it with a TKO. Probably second round, third round. And for you, JB? Yeah, oh, for me, I, I actually um, I actually think that Phil Davis has got he's got more tools in his tool belt. I, I, I put Phil Davis ahead of Ryan Bader in this one because I think Bader just has, the majority of what Bader has is that knockout power and that's even got him in trouble before coming in against Machida. Very I, reckless, yeah. yeah. And the final fight we're going to preview on the official main fight card for a fight night in Sweden there. Uh, Johnson versus Gustafsson is Akira Karasani, the Swedish yep. fighter, That's the right. hometown hero, At home. up against Cecilia. Yeah, Sam Cecilia, who is a um, another long-time uh, fighter. He was a tough alum as well. Um, Come, coming off a loss also. Yeah, mm. yeah, for sure. Um, Akira Karasani at home probably has it against Sam Cecilia for me. I, I believe it is a bit of a rugged trip to Europe as well. He lost in Sweden, though, last year in the Nelson Story um, yep, that's uh, right. uh, fight night event, too. Yeah, that's right. Um, I, I don't know. Sam Cecilia hasn't impressed me ever at this stage. You know, it impressed me enough to get to the UFC, but I don't know about getting past someone like Karasani. And why, I mean, why do you think that is, though? Why do you think he... You just don't think he's got the general tools to make it to the next level? Yeah, because, you know, if I... I would say Karasani is maybe a tier two fighter sure. and Sam Cecilia would probably be tier three. So, mm. you know, in the past we've seen examples of the difference between the, those those different tiers of fighters. And, yeah, I, I think, like you say, I, I just don't think Sam Cecilia does have what it takes. Was was Karasani in the Tough House? Did he ever do Tough House? I am not 100%. Sorry, who, who are we talking about? Akira yeah, no, he was. He was, he, he yeah, was no, no, he was in, he was in the um, uh, Bisbing versus Miller. Oh, ah yeah. yes, he was a me- it was a member of Team Bisbee. Yeah, he was a real angry like uh, it just goes suddenly psycho all of a sudden. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he, no, he was. He was. Re- it was really weird. There's a lot of testosterone in the house. T- testosterone. Testosterone. You're shock- You're yeah, terrible yeah, I, today. I should not uh, say words with more than two syllables. Eh? You should. <laughs> you should probably just not talk in a microphone. Oh wow. Um, but you know, for this match, I'm, I really don't know who's going to win this. But you know, to be honest, is, does this match have any sort of implication? I'm okay. Is this match going to do anything for the title shot for these guys? No. 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 Is, do you think this is just more of a filler than anything else? Who's the featherweight champion right now, sorry? Uh, featherweight is um, Dillashaw. Yeah. Okay. Neither of these guys are even at that level. 
No, nah. no, they're not even in conversations about being at. They're place. probably only. Re- I mean, he's probably. Re- Chris Sutton's probably only really on the main card here because he's his hometown status. Hometown, yeah. And the fact that he's sort of got some reasonable, U- some reasonable profile within the UFC yep, division, that's right. um, UFC competition. He definitely would move the lead needle, as uh, Dana White would say. Yeah, yeah. Okay, man. So that is our little preview on what's happening in the main card. Main card kicking off very, very shortly here for UFC Fight Night on Fox. It is Stockholm, Sweden. The hosting of the good fight. Rumble Johnson versus Alexander Gustafsson. We've talked it through. We've got a whole lot of things. We've got a very special guest coming in here before. Israel Adesanya here. Of course, the the king of the ring. That's right. The champ. King of the, the, ring. Champ the, is, champ. the champ is in the, the house dominant today. Champ. And our first host, our first guest, sorry. Special host. guest. Our first, oh, hey, hey, see, we're all fobs now. <laughs> I, I, I didn't pronounce anything wrong. I just like to clear that up here. You're listening to us here. This is Sprawl and Brawl. We've got more MMA combat sports we're going to talk about in a little while. We're going to talk a little bit about the brown butter bean. We're going to yeah. talk a little bit about Joseph Parker. We're yeah. going to talk a little bit about Jesse Ryder, the cricketer. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know where you're going. Fight, eh? He's yeah, going to fight Cameron right. Slater, yeah. the oh, wow. whale oil blogger. So it's going to be. Come on, man. This is a bit of a joke. <laughs> well, uh, it's celebrity boxing, but yeah, it's all sort of combat. Life. It's got. Wow. Well, I guess we've got to cover everything, don't we? Yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah. you know, we just can't keep it all just UFC, UFC, yeah, yeah. UFC. So you're sitting here right here listening to us. This is Sprawl and Brawl on the SFN. You're with Dan, Etty Red Scarf, and JB, the ultimate. Right, we're going to be back yep. in just a little bit. This is Jay-Z right here on Sprawl and Brawl. It's Sprawl and Brawl, you have Dan, Etty Redscarf, and the ultimate writer, JB. Welcome in. we got our very, very, very special guest, our first guest, actually, on the new podcast, Israel Adesanya. What's up, man? How you doing? Well, my man, how are you? Good, man. Good to have you in here with us. We're down the tap room, 74 Wyndham Street, Auckland City, the new home of UFC and all things combat, sports, and then we're going to have to get you to sign something and put something up on the wall. Maybe it's a big, I big. not have bo- an autograph yet, though. You don't really? have one yet? Not yet. You gotta work it out. That's no. when you start winning shit, you need yeah, to learn yeah. how to sign like I'm like something shit. real <laughs> gangster too, you know. No, have I'm some have some real big, good shit. Make a big make, make a big face. We we need to like get like a big block of wall somewhere and just like <laughs> sign it. So and if we ever get kicked out, we just rip it off the wall, take it to our next place. Yeah, that's no sweat. Yeah, that's all good, man. Yep. Uh, JB, JB. What's up? Give us a breakdown on the champ, the style bender. Yeah, so he is oh. the style bender, uh, one of the last, I would say, style mm. benders. Uh, shout out to anyone who's a fan of Avatar here. Um, now, uh, Israel Adesanya is the King of the Ring middleweight champion, as well as New Zealand's only current glory fighter. Um, for everyone at home, is introduce yourself a bit more. Uh, me? Uh, yeah, my name's Israel, if you haven't figured that out by now. Um, <laughs> what else? Yeah, I'm just a young dude trying to get it, man. How'd you, how'd, you, how'd, you, how'd you get started? Started. A series of happy accidents. All right, I was living in Wanganui, right? And nice. then I started dating this chick <laughs> out in yeah, Auckland. Yeah. Every, good, every, <laughs> yeah. every good fight story starts with, I was dating this chick, yo, and yo, some no. dude creep up, man. I was, and I was like, no, nah, no. Nah. Sort of. No, oh, <laughs> no, no. Like, you guys know the, the movie On Buck, right? Yeah, That's yeah. That's the yeah, movie yeah. that kind of brought Muay Thai into the, the main. Sure, 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 yeah, sure. That's right. Yeah, and... Um, yeah, my boy Cal Gallica, he's like 6'10", from King of the Ring, like 2013. Yeah, and I, he kept on saying, come to Broughton's gym, come train. I was like, yeah, I'll come through. And then I started dating this chick, and I was like, man, like, she was like, to me, I thought like, oh, she was fire. So I was like, you know what? I got to get in shape. Sure, and sure. Then, yeah, I went, uh, yeah. so I, hey, Cal. That's what got me in shape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then I was like, yeah, uh, you know, can I come train? He's like, yeah, sweet, no problem. Cool. So I went in there, and within six weeks, I had my first fight. Okay. And, um, when, when was that? How long ago was that now? 2007, I think. Okay, cool. So that was years ago. Yeah, how old are you now? 25. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so you're, you're real. You're well, well experienced. Well, actually, yeah. actually in, in relation to most MMA fighters, that's actually quite late. A late yeah, start, really. Exactly. You know? yeah, yeah, Whether yeah. it be kickboxing or, what, or whatnot, you know? So, Definitely. Yeah. I started Taekwondo when I was like 9 or 10, but then, yeah, my mom pulled me out because I started kicking everything in the house. So she was like... <laughs> that happens. Yeah. Not yeah, that. I got kicked out for the same reason. <laughs> <laughs> you got kicked out because you're ugly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but yeah, I mean, um, then over time, I just went to like, I, I was a, you might have heard about me dancing back in the day. That was just another, yep. th- another tip that was uh, back in the day. But um, yeah, then eventually combat sports came in and I was never like an aggressive kid or anything. I just kind of like slowly realized like, man, I can, like, I can get good at this. By fight number three, I felt like bang. I was the best. Yeah. yeah. Like I started, like when I saw um, UFC 90, uh, Anderson Silva versus Patrick Cote. Yeah. Classic. And I saw that main event and I was like. Who's this skinny black dude whooping this yeah. guy with like ten <laughs> different styles? Like, and then he used like telekinesis at the end of the round and just blew his knee out. So I was like, yeah. that guy. Yeah, I don't, you know, I want to, I want to try and do what he does. And then I realized I could do this because you don't have to be like some Arnold type dude to you know be a fighter. Like Itty. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so swole. 
So yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so you reckon a guy like Anderson Silva's like a, a you know, he's a bit of an like an idol, I yeah. guess. Oh, in yeah, the fight game? yeah. Like if not for him, I wouldn't have seen me doing it. Because normally people look at you like even when I go to China, what they when I was living in China for a while, like the um, promoters or like the older guys, they'll look at you and be like, "You're a fighter," and then they'll grab your bicep and be like, "Oh, it's not strong." <laughs> How can you fight? With <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm like, like so they have this mentality like you got to be. Swole and you know, yeah. like the movie star, big muscles, yeah. big muscles, take well, you, you know, yeah. b- big bulk around you to take the knocks, them and that's something you need them titties as well. The yeah, 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 gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, so I was like, it has got those, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, boy. you got the bigger cup though. <laughs> 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 Mine's more about definitive shape though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you're sorry, go on, man. No, nah, it's just, um, yeah, over time, I just like even in high school, they call me Butterfingers, man, on the field. Right. Yeah, I couldn't <laughs> catch a ball for shit, like I was never athletic, <laughs> but then yeah. by 18, 19, I started to develop, and then I grew taller. and Started to fill out as well, and yeah, just over so time. Was you found you found your niche in sporting in the end, basically. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah, you know, like, you know, your, your thing. You know, I kind of well, I, I was at a crossroads for a while. It was either, all right, am I going to be a dancer, like a choreographer, or am I going to be a fighter? And I was like, hmm, I can't really go around beating people up for yeah. free, so I can right. always dance and I can right. always kind of get into that. So I decided I'd take this take this route. Yeah, all right, all right, paid off. And other than Anderson Silva, who else has sort of been a uh, that a figure that, that sort of you looked up to in the, in I like the fight Bruce game. Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee. I only got onto him later on though. Like I was, I watched him as a kid a little bit. It's crazy how many fighters though actually you know look at the look at Bruce Lee and sort of well, know, yeah, yeah, have, have, they've shaped their career. But he is the I think he's the first real ultimate martial artist um, for, for especially commercially. You know, um, he's just amazing. Hey, eh? you, you watch you watch the movies, but then when you read up on them. And you're just like fuck this dude. The way he thinks, yeah, yeah. It's just ama- it's, it's, it's literally a way of life. Mm, you know, yeah. he's he's not a guy that just turns up to the gym and that's it. You know, he's Bruce Lee from, you know, the moment he wakes up to the moment he goes to sleep, like just the badass, everything about sure. him. Mm-hmm. So, how many fights in Wanganui did you have? The Wanganui. All right. Well, we gotta go back. I had about because because when did, um, your 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 background's originally Nigerian. Is yeah, that right? I'm from yeah. Nigeria. Yeah, from Nigeria. City, yeah. Um, but I moved to New Zealand in like 2001. Okay. Stayed in Rotorua for about six years. Okay. In Wanganui for about three and a half. Four and that's years. What, but they, you had your first fight in Wanganui, yeah? Yeah, yeah from okay. Wanganui. But okay. I had it in Port Rua. And uh, okay. yeah, I, had, I fought on, on, under Derek Broughton um, for about maybe a year and a half or two. Right. And then eventually I was just like, just I had to get out the city because Wanganui, like your mind only expands as big as your shell. Sure. And. Yeah, people weren't understanding when I was telling them I'm going to do the things I'm doing now. They were just kind of like, oh, yeah, whatever. Right. Cool, bro. And I was like, you don't understand. I'm going to do this. So I just packed my bags one day and just jumped in the car and came to City Kickboxing. All right, man. So you yeah. end up at City Kickboxing here in Auckland. Yeah. And yeah. Home of Doug Vining. Yeah, uh, that's one. Eugene one of Bamberg. New Zealand. Yeah, Eugene. Yeah. Isn't it? The Some evil genius. <laughs> <laughs> Twister. Who else? Chanel. Mike Ango. Like, we've got... Because Eugene does this trick where he kind of goes to the old fighters and be like, oh, bro, you're a little bit out of shape. You should come to the gym. And then, oh, bro, can you hold pads for this guy? And then over time, you kind of like, they stay around and stick around and then become part of the gym. Yeah. All right, all right. And do you, do you think moving to Auckland like really helped you sort of develop yeah. your, your, your your technique and your, yeah, and your, your approach to fighting a little bit yeah, better? definitely. Like when I first came to Auckland, when I first did, um, we had this circuit at the gym called Endurance. Uh, my first Endurance circuit. After I was done, I went outside and I just cried. <laughs> like, literally, I just cried because I've never, my body's never felt that before. Sure. I never trained like that before. So I was like, what have I done? Is this going to be like this every day? And I started, like, freaking the fuck out. I had, like, a little bit of a panic attack. And then, yeah, I realized, like, okay, this is what you got to do. You got to push yourself to be a champion. And this is what I signed up for. So I stuck to it. And these guys, they just train on another level, man. And the way they think, the way they, um, they're students of the game. They approach the game in a way like I've never seen before, you know? Sure. Yeah, so that's why I stuck with them. Right. Yeah. Nice. So, um, you you might have seen recently uh, some of your fellow New Zealand fighters, Dan Hooker and uh, Ev Ting. They've got yeah. a bit of a crew together. They're over in Saigon. Jamie. Yeah, 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 that's right. Jamie VDK over there representing as well. Yeah. Um, any big plans for yourself to uh, to take it overseas again? I know last year you were in China. Yeah. You know, you got some big plans to go over and take it to them overseas again. Yeah. For me, um, I felt like I've kind of already done like. I call it kind of like an apprenticeship. I've, yeah. already, I've already done my apprenticeship overseas, and I feel like if, if I go again, it's kind of like 
I don't want to say taking a step back, but it's just taking a different route. It'll take yeah. Yeah. a little yeah. longer. Like taking a step sideways as sideways, opposed yeah, to sideways, forward. Yeah. Yeah. forward yeah. Yeah. So it's like, because I mean, I would have loved to, like even Barry asked me if I wanted to come through, but I told yeah. him I've got big plans for this year. Yeah. But I want to definitely go visit because Saigon Sport, Sports Club looks like a like World a class. Place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That place looks you know, amazing. Exactly. And the food over there I hear is good yeah. as well. <laughs> so, yeah, but, yeah, I hear the kitchen is intense. It's the bomb. But yeah, yeah. Um, definitely uh, probably go visit later on this year you know if time yeah. allows but we've got some big plans coming up and yeah i just want to stay focused we've, we've, we've kind of got the year mapped out and then by 2016 awesome. we're in the ufc yeah boy well that's great you yeah. know if you've got a plan then that, that's awesome it's the way to be Stick now to um it. you know we've touched on this in the past but for a new zealand fighter living in new zealand mm. tell us about you know the struggle of sponsorship um yeah, things yeah. like that see this is why like guys like jamie you know ev yeah. and dan got a and Dan's a UFC fighter, but still got to leave the country because exactly you know the mm. government isn't is or whoever else isn't like you know supporting us the way it yeah, could yeah. be. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I've told people for years, man. I don't know if I'm like I'm speaking to the choir or if I'm just <laughs> yelling at the doorpost, but like New Zealand's got some of the best combat sports athletes in the world. Yeah. Some of the best fighters yeah. in the world. That's right. Like we've had our heyday when Ray Seth for Mark Hunt, and then yeah. we're still on top. You know, Doug Viney, but um, and Mark's even still in the game. He's still he rocking so the strong. Funny, yeah. But um, yeah, like I see a lot of potential. But hopefully, in the near future, with what I'm about to do with what Dan, Jamie, all those guys, you know, John yeah. Baki and all them, what, what we're about yeah. to do. Hopefully, the next generation don't have to like leave their backyard to go get the attention or the notoriety they need. To, awesome. you know, to be in the sport that's you know that's the secret just like all sports the the closer to home you can be and do that high level training the better yeah. the better it is yeah, for yeah, everybody yeah, absolutely. I haven't met um, what's his name Rashad and uh, nice. like Black Zealands in, in America amazing and Rashad's a funny dude man he's a cool guy within two <laughs> minutes he's like bro give me your number you know, he, I got, he, he gave me his number just said like nice. get you out to Miami train this that and I could kind of tell like they're trying to you know like do a little poach you know but yeah, yeah, like, yeah. for me it's like I just let him know like this is my team. Yeah. This is my team. This is who I started with, and I'm I'm not trying to just get me up. I'm trying to get my team with me as well. Yeah, cool. yeah, cool. you know. And I like I see the talent in the gym every single day, and I know what we can do. And we've got world class coaches. Like you don't have to go out there to find what you're looking for. Yeah. But I still told them like, look, I look, I never look a gift horse in the mouth. So definitely, I'll go over to Miami and um, kick yeah. it with them for a little bit for the a couple of weeks. Experience alone, exactly. Is humongous. Hang out with Henry Hoof, you know, spar yeah. with Tyron Spong or whoever else. You, <laughs> you know, know talking, be, just saying yeah, these yeah. names is, yeah. is These amazing. Are big names, man. Yeah. These are big names, but yeah, like um, for me, just yeah, just learn and keep learning. So I never look a gift horse in the mouth. So I'll, I will do that. But you never have to go out there to try and find what you have to, you know, look for to be great. You just have to look inside yourself. And yeah. surround yourself with the right people, and I feel we've got that at City Kickboxing. So, just very quickly, just hate to interrupt. Albert yeah. Tumanov, fantastic finish in the, uh, oh. in, the in the last of the, the last of the preliminary fights here. The nice. Russian over, of the a, Russian dude. Of a, yeah, Nuka mm. Um We just missed the replay. Awesome, some really really strong head kicks there. Yeah, but he has some nice striking. Man, I like the way he yeah, was man. fluid the whole time. The Swedish guy was kind of stiff, a little bit more rigid, but yeah, he was way fluid. He got hit a little bit too much for my liking, but yeah, yeah Who, I like um, the style. Who are you liking in terms of the main, main card, event. like in terms uh, of the uh, the main event itself? All right, the main event, for me, I kind of want to see Rumble versus Jones just because I've already seen Gus versus Jones. But yeah. I don't know. It's a tough – It's this is like one of those ones It's like 50-50. But on paper, I might say Gus is going to have an edge just. You know yeah, I mean? and what, what do you think gives him his edge? That reach, that height, and the footwork. Yeah, and we know he, he knows how it. to use it all because yeah. uh, he's done it in the past against John Jones. Exactly. So, yeah. with, if um, what all Johnson needs is one punch, one one, yeah. one swift, you know, you know, hook to the chin, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. The guy is a monster. And um, in terms of the the uh, second fight, well, the Ooh, the co-main, Hendo, I'm gonna go for Gigard, man. Yeah. Gigard is just too dynamic. He's no Hendo, joke. Yeah, Hendo's good. He's the man. But he's I just too feel old. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah he's, he's, he's pushing the age barrier a little bit now, man. 50? 40, 40, nah, 44. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, 44, yeah. yeah. And you can't so. deny the impact that yeah, uh, testosterone course. replacement yeah, would have had yeah, on exactly. his Yeah, exactly. And now that it's banned as well. Now that it's yeah. off, the, off the market, off the list. Yep. So you never know how he'll react. Same thing, I'm, I'm looking forward to um, Chris Weidman versus Vitor as well. Sure. Huge. Just because I want to see, I yeah. see how Vitor looks like without um, the TRT. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's, uh, he's a seen beast, a few photos and he, he looks he's good. looked awkward in some photos and he's looked great in other photos. But um, You never know. Until you see him in there, eh? that's yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, just just quickly, um, talk about the build up to King of the Ring and then what you sort of went through. And King of the Ring, yeah, uh, August thirtieth, two thousand thirteen. Yeah, 
That was a good time. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Good for you, not so good for others. Yeah. No, like, King of the Ring. I started planning for it in my head when I was in China because I kind of got word from Eugene. He, Jason already talked to him about it. So it was like maybe March I heard about it. And then I had Glory. I did that. And then from May, in my head, it was just boom. All right, we're on. And then leading up to it, like for about two months, I remember if I had like a gig to do, like, I don't know, some commercial or whatever, if I met someone and it came up, I just tell them August 30th, 6.30 p.m., check this channel out. Yeah. I'm going to win this show. And they're kind of like, some of them were like, oh, well, that's good. Awesome. And some were like, oh, okay. Same thing again. <laughs> I don't want people to doubt me all the time. And I tell them like, no, I'm going to win. Hey, hey, had you, had win. you fought in that sort of format many times before? Only one more, only one time before. And that was, um, that was in, uh, what do you call it? The uh, 2010 Super 8 in Pukakoi. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. And so how, kept, and yeah, how, I won that one. Yeah. I won that one as well. Yeah, but how does, your, how does your preparation differ to what you would for a, like for a normal one? More rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's more rounds with a break in between, a longer break in between rounds, kind of like to simulate the fight. You know what I mean? But, yeah, it was just um, for, for that one, I remember just telling people I'm going to win. People kind of like, yeah, whatever. That's why when I won, I was like, what did I say? So yeah. uh, <laughs> well, I, I, was, I was lucky enough to be there. And I got to witness one of the most gangster moments I've ever seen at King of the Ring. <laughs> Straight up. I mean, like, you, your entrances were cool. You know, you had, yeah. you were very flamboyant and that kind of stuff. Have to be. But, like, you know, it was almost like a thug meme. You know how the thug yeah. memes are really, yeah. <laughs> The classic. I just put one up the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I saw so, that. I, I mean, it was, <laughs> the end of the, it was the end of the first round. And, you know, everyone goes to their corners. Slava goes to his corner, and you know Slava is no joke. He is he's an amazing he's fighter. Beast. Shout he's out to Slava Lixichik. Yeah, he's a, he's an amazing fighter. But yeah. what you did to him in that first round, I mean, everyone was just totally shocked. Yeah. And then the, this is where the thug meme starts. Slava goes to his corner, and you just stand in the middle, yeah. and you just yeah. you put your hands up like, "What's up?" Yeah. Everyone in the place was going nuts. Yeah. Let me you bang, know? bro. Yeah. I didn't yeah. even hear anything. Like I was kind of like just in the moment, I was zoned in on him, but I could see him looking at I think Richie or someone in his corner, and they yeah. kept on glancing at me. It's like, what is this guy me. doing? Yeah. Why is he still looking at me? Yeah. So, well, yeah, we we, we set that up. You know, we, we didn't know who 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 we're gonna have in the first round, but we just yeah. knew. Yeah, we'll just because I go through training without even drinking water. I wouldn't advise it, but yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm a different breed. You know what I mean? I'm, a, I'm set apart. But um, yeah, like yeah, you just said, just instead of instead of yeah, come back to the corner, just stay there and just just fade over him. Just stand there and just no emotion. Huge you know, mental yeah, move. Yeah, yeah. Huge, so yeah. that just I guess took him out of his game. If it was Slav, if it was Ty Williams, if it was you know whoever else, it would have would just taken him out of the game because yeah, like seeing someone just stand there is kind of like what the fuck this guy's. Yeah. One, yeah, I mean, ready. you threw everyone off. I mean, the, all the I needed was 10 seconds or like 20 seconds and I'd be good Yeah, in between rounds. I'm good like that. All right, so we're here with Israel Adesanya here, of course, the King of the Ring champion, the champion, the house of Stylebender, yeah. right here on the, uh, the Brawl and Brawl podcast. We're going to come back in a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit of John Jones. We're going to talk a little bit Ooh. more about the UFC card today. Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, I'm UFC. I'm in love with the Coco. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit about UFC 183 next weekend and a whole lot more before we tie things up at 2 o'clock before the main card about ready to kick off. You're right here, Sprawl and Brawl. It is the SFN. We're good to have you here listening to us. Remember, you can download us. We're here at the Tap Room, 74 Wyndham Street. You, your new home. UFC lives here. Sure. It is all sure. things combat right down here at Tap Room. We're back in a little bit. This is Mob Deep right here. Oh. Good afternoon. It's a Sprawl and Broad podcast. It's good to have you along here. My name is Daniel with JB, the ultimate writer. Writer? The ultimate writer. Is that what you are? No, that's his poor name. <laughs> you are the ultimate writer. I mean, yeah. yeah, that's a new one for me, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think I'll have to adopt that one. It's pretty good. It's your red scarf, and of course, the champ, the style being himself, yeah, is your yeah. Sanya. What's up, man? What's up, G, good to have yeah. you in here, man. Honestly, good to have you down here, and I think we're, I think we're really privileged to have you as our first guest. So, for sure, oh, nah, for sure. Nah, straight up, honestly, it's like for me, it's an honor to be here because I mean, podcast I started listening to in like 2012. Yeah, and when I was working at uh, my old job, pretty much like the Joe Rogan podcast. Um, Fighter and the Kid, Brian Cannon, they yeah, kind of kept me entertained. The classics. Yeah. Because I was just doing some real lame zombie work. And yeah. It's like a good way to just have good guests, just chill out, have a real conversation. And, and talk interview. about shit you like too, exactly. man. You know? Yeah. You know? yeah. Like just just be real because you can't, you can't fake who you are in a, in a three hour podcast or a one hour podcast. You're going to break eventually. Sure. So you can get deep in the conversation and rather than just like 10 minute segment or five minute segment and that's it, we're done. Cool. Commercial break. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It doesn't yeah. work like that. Well, I, I, I gotta ask you, man, Izzy. What's up? Who do you want to fight? 
Put it everybody. Wait, every, is there everybody. anyone in particular? Everybody. Everybody. Um, a- anybody can get it? And anybody. Just, hey, yeah. just pay me. That's it. Because, like, even like, last night, I had karaoke with my boys. And then on the way out, like, the three dudes just tried to, like, I don't know, step to me or whatever. And I looked at them. I'm like, how much you got in your pocket? <laughs> how much you got in your pocket right now? Is that why? I'm like, because if I'm going to whoop your ass, I need to get paid. I don't do this for free. So I tell them, like, I don't do this for free, you know? I know, I know. And, that, and that's actually really good. That's a really, really good, I think, uh, approach to have because you're going to have dudes that are going to try and step to you on the show. Especially, the especially guys who know that you're a fighter, too. Yeah, they they, they want to they have, have a shot at the champ. Yeah. Hey, like they, I, I get they feel like they have nothing I, to lose. When I walk into a club, man, I get <laughs> bitches be like, I want to have a shot at the champ. <laughs> <laughs> Slinging dick. Yeah, man. I'm, they're like, man, I want to see what King Dylan got, man. <laughs> you know, now nah, I get that. He but, only goes to guys' bars, so yeah, <laughs> I don't know how that works. Is that <laughs> Is the one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Itzy took you there as well, yo. Yeah, 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 yeah. This guy like yeah. quick, quick, quick wit. Yeah, yeah, hey, hey, very quickly, John Jones, cocaine. What's I mean? Uh, come on. How, what's your, what's your, what's your, how do you feel about this? For me personally, I'm just like he's a young dude. I mean, with, okay, my ish, not issue, but like my thing with John Jones for so long is like whenever I see him on his post fight inter- interviews, I'm like, this guy's too nice. He's not that way. I know for he, sure because yeah. to be at that level, he's he's got to be like I don't know. He's a young dude. I know what a young guy is, you know, is supposed to think or can think, you know. And also, he's had that DUI with the uh, the Bentley and, and the ladies. two models in the back. You yeah, know? yeah. And I'm like, fuck, every time he's always like the most goody two shoes. And I know he's not. He's not like that all the time. It's a side of him. Yeah. But it might not be the only side of him. So when I saw the um the leaked footage of the DC thing, when there was like, hey, pussy, you still there? Yeah, yeah. That bitch, I fucking took you down. <laughs> and I was like, yes, finally. Yeah. I get to see who this guy is on that level on yeah. that tip. So, I was, yeah, for me, I was excited to see that. And I felt like he should just own that, just be himself rather than... Because I know he's trying to be the, the face of the game. So to do that, he's got to be Mr. Polish, you know. Yeah. Don't do nothing wrong. I love Jesus, all that. You yeah. Know, but, yeah, I just feel like he should just be more himself. But with the cocaine, he's a young dude. He's enjoying himself. And he's going to be surrounded by cer- certain things. Um, there, you know, he's human. He's there's human. There's definitely a mask of PR about what about some of the post interviews that he's done yeah. since huge, since the results huge. came out. Yeah. Um, particularly that one that the big one that they did on Fox Sports recently, last week. You know. Yeah. And and you know and oh my my brothers were disappointed and man, his yeah. brothers playing the NFL. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me they ain't never Those touched guys any are coke. No cocaine yeah, ever bad. before, man. Yeah, John yeah. Jones is an undercover pimp. Yeah. I reckon that oh, he yeah. does that during the day. He's like he's the Tiger Woods <laughs> of MMA. Man. That's, Tiger Woods. that's that's what that's what No, oh, yeah. hey, whoever knew fucking Tiger Woods was out fucking so many exactly. bitches like this. Yeah. Hey, Tiger Woods was laying his shit all over the United yeah, States. Man. That yeah. whole North American continent, honestly, there's <laughs> like little little Asian black blonde kids running around all over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tiger blood all over. Yes, the place. Tiger blood everywhere. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, how do you boys feel about the John Jones situation? Oh, I reckon uh, don't get caught again. I mean, like, you know, obviously, <laughs> you're gonna have a yes. You're gonna have a guy in your crew that can take the fall for you. Yeah. John Jones needs to be like, actually, it's not my blood; it's his blood. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you know. Pass the blame on. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. what he needs to do. How, how's John Jones though? And he's sort of like, it's, <laughs> he's he, he was that guy who had the blood. T- he took the drug test, and he knew it was gonna come up, <laughs> but he didn't say shit because he was like. Yeah. Maybe it might not come up. Yeah. Maybe, you, you, you know, it's like when you, you uh, I'm just saying, it's like stealing money from a mum and dad's wallet when you're a kid. <laughs> and then, and then like, man, I hope they don't notice it's gone. <laughs> yeah, I, I, there's just something not right about the, I mean, and I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Bones Jones fan, man. I, yeah. I mean, I was, I was standing down at the Sky Sports Grill and I was like one of, I was like one in, out of 200 guys cheering for Jones against yeah, DC. Exactly. See, that's the thing. I went, well, even after his post fight, he kind of got a little bit real as well. You know, talking about like you know those who bought the break brown shirts, take your shirt yeah, back. Yeah, get your yeah money that's back. right. I like that because um, you're starting to see you're starting to see it come out, man. You're starting to see it. John Jones turn heel. I like heel. people like yeah. when I say it's, it feels weird saying fans, but like you know I've seen the way fans operate. Like one day they're with you, and then one day they're not. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean, yeah. like for me, I've experienced it. Like look okay. at Evans, look at Rashad Evans. Same exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I've always loved Rashad, but like for me personally, I've experienced it with King of the Ring. The night after King of the Ring, I had like. Probably one of the best nights I've had in town ever. Like I just went out with my belt yeah. and I was just macking. Like I didn't, drunk. I didn't like. Yeah, I was, just, I was enjoying myself, you know. And I was, I was with my crew. I was enjoying myself. But then after Super Eight, I just had my like my crew beside me, you know. Yeah, what I mean? yeah it was. And Super yeah. Eight. That was my fault, you know. I shouldn't have let it go to the judges, yeah, you yeah. know. Like literally, I, you know, I, I knew I was gonna take it out, but it didn't go my way. So then those who were there that time, they're not with you anymore. And I see that as well with fans, like, and I've seen that with Jones. Like people were always on his dick, and then. 
one little excuse on anything he does is scrutinized. And then it's like, oh, he's so fake. He's this, is that. And then, oh, fuck, DC, get him. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love seeing a guy like that because when you get to a certain level, top puppy syndrome kicks in. You know, it's just natural. It's normal. Even your family, your family will do it to you. Your friends will do it to you. They want you to stay where you are, who you are. You know what I mean? They don't but, want to lose you. Exactly. They don't want you to change because, you know, you're kind of like stepping up levels. And I'm like, fuck, I didn't come all this way to stay the same. I'm supposed to evolve, you know? I'll tell you what I like about John Jones and, and what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping for a competitor mm. that can create that legacy of having been a real, a real dominant champion. Yeah. You know, I'm, 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 talking, I'm talking the light heavyweight version of, of Anderson Silva, you know? Yeah. Someone who can hold the title for a long, long term, time. create that, that mega legacy. Yeah. You know, because I, I like it. I mean, we're, we, we, before in, in the other podcast, we we're talking about NBA. I'm a massive Kobe Bryant fan. Yeah, okay. The yeah, Black Mamba. The Black Mamba, yeah. man. And like, because with him getting injured, I'm like, man, I just want his, I don't want his legacy to be tarnished. I want yeah. him to go out the, the man that he is and the player that he is in, in regards to how his legacy stacks up with everyone else. Yeah. It's the same thing for guys like um, John Jones, which yeah. leads me to UFC 183. Oui. It, yep. You know, Anderson Silva. I mean, Ooh, I, I hate, I hate, I hate to bring it up, but is the spider done? I mean, nah. I, Diaz. I mean, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna assess Diaz. I know he's gonna he's assess Diaz. Gonna, but <laughs> for the, for him to take the championship again, I just, I feel like his chin. That's the only thing I'm worried about. I'm just like, because even in the second fight, I haven't watched the circuit, the second fight, but I've seen a highlight where um, Weidman had him in the clinch and they hit him with an overhand. Yeah, he dropped him. And then he dropped the him, and I was just like. Oh, that's not because it's kind of like Chuck Shane Liddell, you know. Sonny. Back in the day, Chuck Liddell apparently Dana says you can hit him with a steel pipe, and he'd be like, "Fucking come on, let's go." Yeah. But he got hit by a little short right by Franklin, and then his body just yeah, like, "Oh, we're it. done." He got a button, and that yeah. was it. So you can't punch. You can, you can, you can only punch those cards too many times. And even there's a rumor going around that Silver got dropped, inspiring in this in, in, in this camp. Yeah, Shane. Don Rowe was telling me. Shout out to Don Rowe. And um, yeah, I was like. Uh well, regardless, I'm still gonna go for D. I'm um, for, for yeah, Silva because yeah, yeah. but I like both guys. Diaz is a bad motherfucker as well, but yeah. you know, I, I just feel like Silva. I think you know he's getting old as well. He's still got the skills, but I just feel like at the highest level, like a guy like Weidman is a beast. You know, and got guys like me coming up as well. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that uh, what what Silva's camp should do is put fights that uh, people have always wanted to see. Maybe yeah. like uh, Silver versus GSP. GSP you know? Yeah. The, the big money. If GSP does it though, like GSP that, might yeah, not yeah. want to come That's a back. Floyd Manny pack yeah. sort of situation <laughs> going on there. Yeah. You know? All right then. Hey, Floyd Manny, does it happen? It happens. It I think happens. it has to. If, if it doesn't, then Floyd's legacy is tarnished. But I think Floyd on paper and should beat Manny, but he's going to have problems with Amir Khan next. And if he, face triple, if he faces um, Triple G, I don't think he can get past Triple G. All right, all I right. Just, that's how I see because Floyd also his age, same thing. It's kind of it's gonna catch up to him. You can't beat Mother Nature. Mother Nature is always gonna win. Hey, and Mother Nature, man. What about Rampage? Rampage. I think he just needs to. He's too. I don't want to. I like Rampage. Don't get me wrong. I've always loved Rampage, but it's just too one dimensional and also just. Yeah. Um, I just feel like same thing. Age is catching up to him. You know, he. I don't think he's. Um, he loves training. Like my my my, my trainer. One of my trainer twist trained with him. You know, he loves him, but he says the same thing. Like sometimes he just doesn't put the work in that he should. That That's he could. something that you've always heard about Rampage is that he's lazy. Yeah, exactly. And I, I can relate. I used to be lazy. But yeah. then I like I had to put myself around the right people, surround myself with the same people that on the same mission as me, you know? Sure. And then yeah, that's why now you see me constantly. I'm always I'm always working hard now, putting myself out there so I can be accountable for myself, you know? That's it. Yeah. yeah. For me, um, with the Rampage thing, I think they are doing what they're doing with Mirko Krokop yeah. as well. Obviously yeah, he's he back as well. Back. I just heard. I think they're buying the legacies of these fighters so that they can't go into business against oh, them. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're like Bellator or One yeah, FC or exactly. whoever else. Because exactly. who know, tried to go with um, Bellator? I think Vanderlei tried to do some, some shit with, with Bellator, and then Dana was like, uh... Yeah, just sign with us. Yeah, you same. Can't be and yeah. Uh, Gilbert Melendez, as same well as thing, Mirko yeah. himself, you know, there yeah. were rumors he signed with Bellator, and then next day, boom. Yeah, I mean, they got the money so they can buy them out, man. I know yeah. they got the money. Yeah, well, Bellator, <laughs> Viacom, money, money, yeah, money. Of course, well. of course. Another, another topic which we were just going to touch on very, very quickly is what sort of impact is a guy like CM Punk going to have in there? Oh, uh, God, I was ready for that. I was ready for that. He wants to fight CM Punk. Are you going to challenge yeah. CM Punk? I mean, like, for me, I know it's a <laughs> long shot, them. but, like, if they, if they called me up right now and told me, oh, you fight, I'll do it tonight. You're like, straight up. I'm in shape. I'm ready. But it's just, like, for me, it's it, it's a double-edged sword because, okay, he's going to bring viewers to the sports. They're going to see what real fighting is all about, what real combat, yep. what real martial arts is all about. But then I feel like there's certain guys like, you know, Jamie, myself, John Vake, and, you know, guys that have put in work, so much work. But then 
you know and this guy just kind of just comes off out of nowhere with no amateur record no nothing but at the same time from it's kind of like okay example if i found a related it's kind of like me with the super eight i had no amateur boxing background no pro boxing background and i just come in there and i whoop you know multi-time music but you overall. have pro combat sports background. yeah yeah exactly yeah Phil and Brooks has none of it you see that's the difference yeah exactly but yeah so i see i see i see what what dana's doing it's a good move you know money wise Cash but up. But yeah, well, is it a smart thing for CM Punk to do though? He's like what 30, 30 he's 36, I think yeah. 36, 37. He's in shape. But I'm like, what in nah, WWE? What kind of like Mexican supplements is he using? Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, I gotta be honest, man. I don't. I don't I, is that yeah. John Jones stuff? <laughs> that cocaine. Man, I don't even know. But you've seen his physique. I don't know yeah. what he's saying. It can't be nothing. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, but because he, he, he's straight vegetarian at the moment. Yeah, oh, real. Wow. Yeah, yeah, man. So he, he dropped meat out of his out of his out of his diet. That's why towards the end of his WWE run, he he lost a lot. Of weight, so he slimmed and, out. Yeah, so he slimmed out, and then he needed to slim down a little bit more to cut weight to get yeah. down. So, so I never to caught, get down to one eighty five. I never caught that weight. I mean, that that, that wave of CM Punk. I kind of got out of WWE like around John Cena, like the later part. And yeah. I just, yeah, the I, cartoon I was, era. It's, yeah, yeah, it's still going. The yeah. cartoon it's still, era. Still the John Cena it's still, era. It's still going. Oh, see, I don't even know, man. It'll be interesting. But, to, it'll be interesting to see how CM Punk goes. They reckon that his as, as Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is pretty solid. He's with um, the Gracies. The uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, he's, he's trained by Royce Gracie. Yeah. And he's fighting out of uh, Rufus, which is um, yeah. yeah, Duke the, Rufus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's what's coach. Pettis Close and, to Chicago. Askren as well. Yeah, Which is really, which is really weird because I thought he'd go to American Top Team. Yeah, and that Miami. was and, and that was a lot of the talk too was that he was he was probably going to move down American top team a lot of the guys That's that right. he's involved with, I mean so okay. yeah. But I, I also think that CM Punk he's not an idiot. Eh? He's not going to go into the UFC and get his ass whipped no matter how much money. They're that's it, get and, and that's yeah. what I'm, that's what I'm, we talk about like it's a good decision for Dana White. Is it a good decision for CM Punk yeah. to go in there and put himself in that in that environment yeah. to take the knocks that he potentially is going to take? At that age as at well. At that age as yeah, well. Right. I'm sure he's taking some as well in WWE because that's no they, joke. You know, they're like pretty much glorified stuntmen. They yeah. throw yeah. themselves off the cage, throw themselves off the ladders. You know, like yeah. Yeah. that's not that's not fun. I wouldn't. And not onto inflatable bags. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Onto fucking tables and you yeah. know spikes yeah. and onto whatnot. The actual ground. Yeah. And stuff. I think um, Phil Brooks. Uh, you know, oh, that's he, his name, Phil Brooks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's getting old, um, definitely. I know. I know you've been referring to him as Phil Brooks for the last for the last. Uh, I got to disclose this for for so long. I thought JB was white off Facebook. <laughs> I, had to, I only just found out. I was like, oh, what's your name, JB? Wait, I was like, Whoa. You're, not, you're not white, <laughs> solid. <laughs> <laughs> but he's from the shore, though. So you know, he's kind of still white. Like, there. Yeah. His name on Facebook is like Jean Barry. I was like, <laughs> is this the same JB? Hey. Izzy, so, the champ, good to have you up? in, man, brother. My man, boy. Dude, awesome to have you man. down, man. Let's Style go. bender. Thanks we'll get guys you down for us. Hey, let's get you down another time. We have another chat and that sort of thing. Yeah, no problem, man. Even before my next fight, I'm down. All That's right. right. Yeah, hey, and just before you go, let us let, let the fans know where they can contact you, where they can add you on Facebook, uh, Catch me on the social network. Oh, this is uh, Style Bender, at Style Bender on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, slash Style Bender. And uh, yeah, just, I don't know. I don't bite. Just talk to me and be nice. Troll me, I'll troll you. That's the one. Don't <laughs> don't troll him in real life. Cause don't he's tro- a, yeah, because he fucks shit up. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. I hey. don't play in these streets. And then, he'll, and then he'll rob you for all your money. Too. I will, because I'm black. <laughs> Just so you know. That's Just so you know. Awesome, awesome. JB? Uh, yes. Good to have you here again. <laughs> <laughs> the white guy, not white guy. <laughs> the white guy, not white guy. The white guy, not white guy. Scotch <laughs> egg. <laughs> Eddie Red Scaff. I'm Dan. This is Sprawl and Brawl. We'll be back next Sunday for some more podcast MMA talk. Yeah, what do you want, Red Scaff? No, nothing. I was, I, You're I, leaning into the microphone oh, as if you're about to suck it. Oh, like, oh, 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 oh whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> hey, UFC, Stockholm, Sweden, down here at the Tap Room, 74 Wyndham Street. Main yeah. card is literally minutes away. Shit. Gustafsson versus Rumble Johnson. Come it's going to be a good effort. Yeah, come through, man. We've got some great deals. And if you don't want to come through, check it out. Watch it. It's going to be great. UFC 183 next weekend. We're part of our Super Weekend of Sport with the Super Bowl, oh. with the NIL 9s, with the cricket. It's all on next weekend. It is Sport and Brawl right here. SFN. This is Common right here.